five, four, three, two, one. Please do not change channel. From Krypton Radio, brought to you by Famous Faces and Funnies and Off the Chain with Yvonne Mason, it's the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour, the Internet's premier pop culture talk radio show. You're tuned in, you're logged on, and now your hosts, G.W. Pometer and Christian Basil. Who are you hanging with? All right. Hello, Krypton Radio. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. I'm G.W. Pometer. And I'm Christian Basil. How are you guys doing there? And we are here tonight... Uh, on our inaugural launch of yeah. the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. Christian, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling pumped up. I love this, man. I've been, and and uh, Krypton Radio, got to love it, man. I mean, this brings us a new audience to listen to us, and they're going to have a great time. They we're we're going to bring them out now. Krypton, yeah. and, th- and this is a great topic for our first episode, too. Yeah, it is. Krypton has been so welcoming and, and brought us in, and we're really, really, really excited uh, to be on uh, Krypton Radio. We have an all-star panel tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, we have a an all-star group to talk about the diversification of film and television, particularly our heroes and our heroines in, in pop culture right now. So uh, on the air with us right now, we have KG Daniels. We have James Bethel, we have Toy Thomas, we have uh, Nisha Mulchin, um, and we're going to give each one of the, you guys a chance to introduce yourself here in a second. Um, thanks for being on the show, guys. We really appreciate you guys calling. Yeah. In. No worries. Yes. All right. All right. Well, no um, okay. Well, uh, it's a timely topic right now. Uh, everybody know Black Panther just hit theaters to resounding audience uh, approval mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, this is uh, pretty much a, a cast, uh, an all, I would say African American, but it's just African. It's Wakanda. So, uh, cast of characters, and um, and it's it's being received really, really good. Uh, Christian and I off the air earlier were talking about the fact that in pop culture, in geek culture, this is not a new phenomenon in the creative arts. Uh, you know, Toy, we've known you uh, for two years since we started the show. Uh, you know, James, you've been on our show here before talking about your comics. Uh, you know, KG, you've been on the show and, and doing work with us and, and talking about sci-fi and things like that. But to the mainstream audience, this we're breaking the Internet. We're breaking the mainstream media right now by sharing that diversity with them. What do you guys what do you guys think about that? Is this a good is this a good thing? Is it is it good that we're sharing it or is it bad that it has to be shared uh, that they didn't already get it? I'd say a little bit of both. A little bit of both, yeah. Uh, now, James, you've worked in comics. You've been you've been doing uh, your own heroes for quite some time now. What what do you think of this happening in the mainstream audience? Well, me personally, I think it's great because um, everybody's are you know everybody's out there. Either Marvel, or DC, um, and basically since the um, I guess sixty seventies, haven't been that many African American or. Um, ethnocentric characters out there so i think it's a good thing that number one panther did so well at the box office maybe they even do more films at least that's what i'm hoping that would be that would be really a good thing um you know to see more of that story uh has anybody have anybody seen the movie anybody not seen the movie uh since it came out i've seen it have you seen it toy what yeah you, i saw it what did you think when you walked out of the theater what was your first thought i i thought it was a wonderful movie um very well executed um, considering the changes that had to be made for a theatrical version, I mean, a lot of people complain about movies based upon books, but they're adaptations. But with those considerations, it was very true to the story of Black Panther and what his whole story is about. So I thought it was a wonderful film. Hey, guys, any, have any of you guys seen the movie yet? I, but James, I think you uh-huh. have you seen it. Yeah, I've seen it, man. I had an awesome experience. Um, I was in Orlando and they have a 4D experience. Wow. <laughs> What, what is, what's the fourth D? Oh, hey, we, well, gotta, we want to real quick, uh, we've introduced our panel, but we have Mark B. Lee has joined the conversation. Mark, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? We sure can. We sure can. So, Mark, have you uh, have you seen Black Panther yet? I was invited to a uh, press uh, viewing about a week and a half before it debuted, and then I saw it again for the second time uh, the Thursday night before uh, the Friday opening. So what was your first thought coming out? We were talking about uh, how – in in geek culture, in our culture, um, mm-hmm. the the advent of 
a more diverse uh, racially and gender cast is not anything new. We've been talking about these things since the 60s in comics and sci-fi. But to a mainstream audience, they're going crazy over this. So what when you came out, how did you how did you feel about the movie? How did how does it represent that diversification for a mainstream audience? Oh, I, I, I was blown away, uh, mainly because there was no stereotypes in it. Mm. Okay. There, there was nothing that revealed to me um, that the uh, writers nor the directors uh, wanted to portray uh, uh, black people, African Americans in the light that has been portrayed for decades. So um, it, 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 it's a shame that it came to that. It's a shame that we, in fact, even have to discuss that we're not shown as stereotypes. Um, but I, I, I would have welcomed it at, at any time that it came along. So Absolutely. Christian and I off the air earlier were talking about the fact that in geek culture, this is nothing new. We've had some iconic, wonderful characters for years and years. Um, and, and, you know, Toy and I talked earlier. Um, in your mind, Mark, is it is it a positive that we're sharing this kind of diversity with the mainstream audience, or is it a negative that we have to and that they don't already well, get it? Already get it? Well, and, and like I said before, um, yeah, I think it's, it's negative that we had to, but I don't think it's being portrayed as that. In fact, I think the current generation uh, is more upped on the anti-racism uh, attitudes of this country than, you know, uh, my generation, put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, it's more ex acceptable. It's basically a no-brainer. I, I honestly think that anybody over the age of uh, 40 – um, is, is probably saying, oh, thank God, it's about time, whereas anyone under the age of 40 is going, well, this is a freaking good damn movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it, it was. It was an incredible film, too, and they did a fantastic job, of, of as Toy said earlier, of uh, adapting for a cinema audience uh, a story that already was really super fleshed out. There's been, I think, three or four variations on the Black Panther story since it was created by Marvel. Um Absolutely. So it, it was a great time in theaters. But, you know, Black Panther is just the most recent example. We've had a great string of diversity in the last two years, uh, would you, would particularly in superheroes and sci-fi. You know, we've yeah. had uh, – the girls and I here at the house recently started watching uh, Black Lightning, which is the D.C. variation of a of a urban black family in America uh, superhero story. And uh, they're, they're attacking things like head on from – Right out of the headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to hear my list? Sure. Oh, you got a list. He, somebody's got a list. I like that. Lists well, well fun. thanks to uh, MeTV, which is actually one of my favorite TV stations right now, based on um, you know things uh, things back in the day. Uh, and it, 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 they they put up a brief history of uh, you know African Americans in uh, TV shows. Uh, starting off, and I'll go through this really, really quickly, only because it's, there's 13 of them, and I'm not going to drag this out. There's other people here other than me, but uh, number one on, on their list is Yuhora from Star Trek. Uh -huh. uh, number two is Dan Erickson, who uh, was the co-pilot in Land of the Giants. This was, we're talking 1968 to 1970. Yuhora was uh, 1966 to 69, then 1973 to 75. Um uh, we have a few people I'm going to skip over because um, I, I, I don't even know the shows, but uh, there's <laughs> a British young lady in, a, in a, a show that was a British show, sort of like X-Men kind of people, and it's 74 to 79. Um, if you remember the animated series of Space Sentinels in 1977, Astria, uh, who was an African-American female. Yeah. Uh, uh, she was there then, of course, in 1977. We had Black Vulcan, who was a member of Super Friends. Yeah. Um, number six, they had Micro Woman and Super Stretch back in 1978, and they were part of Tarzan and the Super 7 animated show that was on. Of course, there was 79 to 84 was the Brown Hornet, which was featured in Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Uh-huh. Might remember that. Uh, Molecule Lad in 1981 to 82 was part of Tarzan and Super 7. Dr. Elvin Lincoln, 1985 1986, he was in a uh, live action show called Misfits of Science, played by Kevin Peter Hall. Uh, he was the seven foot tall scientist in the in, in the show that could shrink down, much like Ant Man. Oh wow! Uh, I did, that one I did not know. 
Yeah. Oh, my, I watched the show. You know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy. So, I mean, I definitely watched it. In fact, Courtney Cox from Friends uh, started her look, acting look, debut as, yeah. as someone on that show. Um, Lothar, number 10, Lothar. We got three more. Number 10, Lothar, 1986-1987, who was part of an animated uh, cartoon called uh, uh, Defenders of the Earth. Uh, the characters were the Phantom, Flash Gordon, Mandrake, the Magician. Uh, Lothar was psychic. Well, not, he wasn't a psychic. He's the main character. Number 11, Benjamin Sisko, 1993 to 1999. Of course, yes. Nine. Yeah. Uh, and number 12 in 1994, there was Mantis, as played by Carl Lumbly. Yeah. Uh, if you remember that series. Yeah. Uh, yes. It wasn't on long. And then I think this is the last one right here. Yeah. Number 13, uh, Jeff Jackson. Uh, 1998 to 2001, he was on the Disney Channel production of the famous Jet Jackson um, Super Spy series or whatever. So there's there's Me TV's list of 13 previous heroes uh, that was on television prior to Black Panther. You know what? What's amazing about that is that um, that w- that was a list of 13 that was uh, uh, top, TV. top 10, but, mm. but um, that's 10 spread over uh, what 40 years. Oh yeah, talking and, from sixty six. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And so, and now we have in the last two years, just and this is off the top of my head. I don't have a list. I'm just going. We have Luke Cage who broke Netflix. It was it was a decent right. show. It was a really well put together show, and it and it did it broke Netflix. It literally broke Netflix. <laughs> it was a good show. It was. And we have Black Lightning is on CW right now. We've got Black Panther yeah. in theaters right now. We have Falcon in the Avengers, who is taking on an increased role each each movie. They seem to give him at least one extra line. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, we we in this. Oh, let's not forget Storm from the X Men. Absolutely. Uh, we, we we we. You know what? To even bypass that isn't isn't even a joke because she was bringing it uh, fifteen years before the rest of these guys came on the scene. As we'll an see. Ever- yeah. One thing that I'm really like my little geek self is hoping for, which may never happen. You know, I feel like Sony, you know, gave us a little handoff when they let us use Spider-Man. I'm waiting for that whole Storm and Panther crossover, just like the comics book, because they're supposed to be this power couple. Oh. Now, now everybody knows that. Uh, yeah. You know, wow. well, that's supposed to be his queen from this point on. Wow. So yep. We got big things coming down the road, but that, that brings us to our next topic. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, weigh in here, man. What do you yeah. think? What do you think of all these developments? Oh, I got a lot. Um, well, first of all, I saw Black Panther twice. I loved it. I love the, uh, I just love everything about it. The second time I saw it, I had my daughter with me. She's eight years old. And after we left the movie theater, I asked her, I said, well, what do you, what stood out to you? She said, I love, that's her exact words. I love strong, the strong black women who were smart. Yeah, I said, damn right. And, and, man, and they brought them. They did. Black yeah. Panther really brought them. Now, uh, what's really great about this topic right now uh, is that um, we have, uh, like we said before, we've had uh, a lot of diversity in geek culture for a very long time in the form of written characters in books and things like that. Um, we have Nisha Mulchin on the line with us from Diversely Geek. Nisha, what do you think about these developments the last couple of years in film and television that have been around in, in pop culture, you know, that you've been following for years? So hello everyone and hi Mark. Long time no talk to you. Hey uh, Nisha, how are you? Been? <laughs> um so I've actually seen the movie twice myself and we're heading out to our third viewings sometime shortly. I was also there um Thursday night at one of the fan events. The let's say that Across the spectrum of uh, the geek world, I feel that we have been, as Mark pointed out, um, making strides since the 60s, basically, in being able to diversify um, in a multicultural perspective in, in, in the fandom and pop culture world. It's just that when we do it just as par for the course, because those characters are written in as just so perfect for the world that we're discussing or that we're, we're evolving... Um, or that the the writers are creating, then there isn't that, you know, big, oh my goodness, wow, so you put a character who's, you know, um, who's of a different race here, because it makes sense. So it has a lot to do with the writing, you know, and whether or not that the writer or the developers have the, the belief that that's the right character, that to be able to develop their storylines, 
you know, um, so I used to remember Black Panther's been around since 1966. Well. Uh, uh, Nisha, I think we're leaving, we're losing you a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we've, like I said, we've had these characters for a long time. We're sharing them with a, a much broader audience now, which is a fantastic thing from where I sit. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, this is, it's this is—it's not just our our people of color or our um, not just our people of color or uh, our ethnic diversity is showing, but we're seeing a lot more strong female characters as well. Uh, Toy, what do you think about that? Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> but I'm, well, not, I'm not I'm saying not, that that's um, as equally represented as it should be because it's not. Um, and um, but I, I do feel that there's a lot more strong character compositions. Case in point would be Black Lightning, for instance, because you know Black Lightning himself is a strong um, urban superhero, but goes beyond that. But so is his family. You do remember that all the all of the family members have um, developed super skills as well, and those young ladies are pretty awesome. Um, but in Black Panther. It's just par for the course that these, that Shuri or that Okoye or, or, you know, Nakia are all just these great, amazing beings. Like you had said originally, it's about humanity, right? It's not about the male or female character it's a, or what color. It's the character who's the best, you know, the person who best fits that role. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think yeah. I think that's where we that's where we've come to now, where we can actually tell these stories in the rich tapestry that that is people. People are uh, we all shapes, all sizes, all genders. Well, you know, it just we and now it's it's we're finally getting to a point where we're seeing that represented. I think on film and television more and more. In particular, I think, and I'm going to throw this out to the rest of the panel, um, and, and to, you know, Christian, by all means, I really think that in that way our community geek culture is leading the way mm -hmm. when it comes to this discussion. Um, you know, Christian, what do you think? Well, first of all, let me put it this way. Um, I haven't seen the movie. I'm probably the minority in this. And it's not because I don't want to see the movie. I've just gotten to the point in the age and in the position where if I want to see every Marvel DC and all the movies I want to see, I'm going to be bankrupt and not be able to live in my house by the time, you know, that I can afford going out to these movies and buying the popcorn and all that stuff. And the experience is kind of – the movie theater experience wasn't the same when I was growing up. It's kind of gone downhill for me. And that may not be for everybody, but I just I, – I like it when I kind of have the control. When it comes on Netflix, I'll tell you how bad things are. I've just watched Rogue One. You know, on Netflix is because I can control it. If I got to go to the bathroom, I can stop it. I can pause. It, I can eat whatever I want. I can take my time. I can look things, rewind the tape and see it. When I'm in a movie theater, it's a different thing. I, I think th there have been certain movies that have gotten me out of, out of the house like Deadpool, which works best when there's a lot of people in the theater expressing, you know, having the emotions, ha laughing and all that stuff. But I've kind of just lost the, the movie going thrill. And that's why I haven't seen the movie yet. I, I'm hoping to sometime with a bunch of friends, but haven't had a chance yet to do it. So that's why I'm far behind on things. Hey, do you mind if I weigh in for just a second? Well, I was going to do the same, but go for it. <laughs> What's okay. that? Tell you what, let's the reason toy, toy, you go ahead and then, and then Mark, we're, we'll keep an eye on you there and you can go too. The reason why I would like to um, weigh in at this point, um, I'll be very brief. Um, I totally get where you're coming from with the, your whole, you know, the movie experience now is not what it used to be. Um, my husband and I budget out very carefully what movies we choose to see in the theater, other things we wait to see streaming. Um, there are certain films, there are films that I don't even like, but I have gone to the theater to see them, to support them. And it's kind of to make a statement. I mean, I was going to see Black Panther anyway, mm -hmm. but as a black person, I went out to see it to help it make as much money as possible to make a statement. Now, I get that that's that that's for me. I don't expect everyone else to, you know, make a decision like that. But sometimes, like I said, even when it's not necessarily a film that you enjoy watching, sometimes we go to the theater to support a cause. That's all. No, oh, that's, that's, that's whatever you want to do. 
Yeah. And if you want to support something, I give you 100%. I back you up. I support you. And it, that's your call. Like I said, I mean, if I'm going to catch up on uh, Affinity War, Affinity War 2, Avengers, Civil War, and all these <laughs> things, I'm just going to go broke by the time I catch up, you know, and getting to these movies and having time to do it. And I work uh, two Mark, jobs. Mark B. Lee, I think Christian is fishing to be your plus one the next <laughs> meeting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, if, I, if, if I could weigh in, I, I am actually yeah, on a yeah, total. I'm on a total opposite end of the spectrum with Christian on this. Okay. And okay. only well, you guys know I, I write spoiler-free reviews on my Facebook page all the time. Um, and 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 in order to accomplish uh, accomplish that, get the full feeling of a theatrical experience, I have to be in the theater to see these movies. Uh-huh. Other point I wanted to be uh, make is okay, fine guys. Uh, I may be the only oldest person uh, online right now. I did see Star Wars 1977 day one eleven yeah. times eleven times that weekend in the theater. We had no Netflix. We had no internet uh, or, or massively. Actually, I think Mac came out in the 80s, so none of that existed. Uh, we relied solely on television reviewers, Cisco and Ebert. You know those guys when they were out to influence us to go out to the theaters to see these, these movies, but uh, to kind of uh, uh, attack team a little bit on this as well. When I go to the movie theaters, okay, it's first show, Saturday morning, I pay no more than six bucks for any motion picture that I've ever seen unless I want to max out and see it in Adobe Theater. In fact, I no longer go to IMAX theaters anymore after experiencing Adobe Theater reclining seats and the sound and the quality of the pictures and the colors that Adobe supplies us with that outtops any IMAX theater that I've ever been to. Well, so I think, I think a lot of that, Mark, uh, is our is our collective age, you and I, because I need yeah. that I need that Dolby sound so that I can walk out of there and know what I heard. <laughs> well, and, and not, to, not, not not to talk too much on, on Christian, but to emphasize this a bit, I saw Rogue One in the theater, but then I saw it probably seven or eight times after that on my 65 inch TV sitting here in front of my face as we speak. So I see the differences in theatrical experiences when you're, when you're, when, when, when you want to support movies such as this. And I honestly think nothing can actually touch a theatrical visit to see something you are so geeked out about. Can I make a, a, a little point that brings the two, our two points of references because we've kind of gone in a very interesting <laughs> direction with the conversation. Um, so I am, Probably, sorry, Mark, but I'm actually older than you. Um, I did the same thing. I've been watching movies in the theaters for a very long time. And as a an Asian-American youngster growing up in New York in a very, very, very Italian neighborhood, going to the movies at, um, at that age and seeing, first of all, being part of the theatrical experience was, for me, like, it, I just loved it. It was amazing to go en masse with my family and all of us just completely indulge in the experience so um you know i absolutely love it and i love it today one of the things i love the most about going to a movie experience to bring back to black, black panther is i went there and I, every time i have gone i have just spent so much time just looking at everyone attending their movie and just mm-hmm. hearing their happiness and hearing their joy looking at the the, the lovely most beautiful um social socially amazing um outfits that everyone had on. It was just like gorgeous stuff out there. And the amount of time and effort people put into making their own shirts and making their um, their own, um, you know, accessories as expressions of their just pure joy of being able to one, see the movie, two, being part of it. And then, of course, being part of this big, wonderful, amazing culture. I sat in the movie, and I am Asian, um, and I just completely felt completely compelled to become one with the experience, the sound, the the the, the visuals, the effects of it. And if there was if there was a way I could smell anything, I would probably have been part of the No, that that is a part of that theater. That's a part of that theater experience. And that's why I think that's a lot of people go for uh, I know I go to the theater for the spectacle. Um, when there's a great day, when, when there's an event like Black Panther, when there's an event like Civil War, or when these spectacle movies um, come out, I like to see those on that big screen with that surround sound in that in that environment and watch people. People watch as much as you movie watch. That's um, I love it. Yeah. In this so, particular now, t- back over here, like I said, Black Panther, we, we kind of kicked us off and we talked about uh, how 
the diversity of color is is making its way into film and television. Uh, we also talked a little bit about how we're adding more and more strong female characters. Well, I, I wanted to add something to this sure. because when it comes to and and this is not first of all it is not to downplay what this represents to some people not only on this panel but for some people who have watched and appreciate the movie and and what they've seen but i don't go to the movies ever to go okay who what color is the cast i go because we have a good story i go because there are some great actors and actresses who are performing the roles and i want to be entertained for the next 65 to 90 minutes out there if you want to talk about a diversity of a race of people who have getting shafted by Hollywood, no look no further than the Asian race. Oh, please yeah, I me, totally agree. I mean, please, the please last... tell me the last three or five Academy Awards we've won. Yeah, yeah. What, toy, exactly. Toy, go ahead, toy, go ahead, weigh in. Well, no, I was just going to say, I mean, one of the main reasons why everybody's talking about Black Panther right now is because it's a predominantly black cast. But when was the last time that there was a predominantly <laughs> Asian cast. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Flower Drum Song, and that's a Rodgers and Hammerstein movie. So I totally <laughs> agree that, that the out? Asians need to be represented <laughs> well, more. And to be fair, uh, right. the, Asian, uh, but, the Asian population is much larger than just the one that's referenced. I mean, right. I am Asian and, as well. You know, and I would and, and, point out, yeah, yes. off the air earlier, we're actually talking about this a little bit, <laughs> the fact that uh, uh, most people don't know that the idea for uh, what became a television show when, when Mark and I and, and uh, Anisha were, were small. The television show Kung Fu, I, the idea actually came from Bruce Lee, who they cut out of his own project yeah, to, to cast that, another actor. So, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. So it does. And, but it, is, you, it happens you, across all spectrums and in all of our uh, uh, diversity, yeah. And to add, but everybody has... Sure. If you don't mind. Sure. I'm not sure if you're hearing me. Just checking. We can barely hear you, Anisha. I'm yeah, sorry. I had a feeling something was going on. I apologize for that. Can you hear me? So I just wanted to weigh a quick point because we are a diversity-based organization, and um, one of the things we do when we're when we're working across the spectrum of media, regardless of what the media is, but film and te- television, of course, being most prominent because it's visual, um, we always weigh in, believe it or not, a percentage of diversity, and it goes across the spectrum of diversity, whether it's race, whether it's culture, whether it's socioeconomic status, whether it's um, um, you know, whether it's um, also gender, gender list, and across that board. And we will look at it and say, hey, um, while this is an amazing feel-good movie and we really appreciate it, did, 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 was it um, true to social culturalism? Because we're an extremely diverse nation. We are a highly diverse nation and, of course, you know, um, should be so represented. And is that representation fair and equal in the media uh, t- today, um, you know, from my point of view, of course, it's not, and we, you can, you know, um, agree well, or was, not. That's, I, you know, that was that, that brings us to our, our next topic, which we want to get to in the next half hour. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let a break in here really quick. Oh, from our partners at French. Yeah, I know, I know. And what we do, we want to talk about. We have done so well. We have come so far. But in the next half hour, let's talk a little bit about what we can do better, what we can do more of. So before we do that, let's jump on over and hear from our fantastic partners and friends. And we'll be right back. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. The Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour on Krypton Radio, bringing you the very best in pop culture talk radio. Each Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour with your hosts, G.W. Pomager and Christian Basil, who are hanging with rising pop culture newcomers as well as superstar icons. The Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. Tune in Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Who are you hanging with? 
Excellent. All first. right, we're back on the air, everybody. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get, go around the table real quick. Um, we have uh, an all-star uh, panel here with us. Uh, we haven't actually got to hear from everybody yet, but we have James Bethel, the comic creator of Z Lunar. We have Mark B. Lee, who is, among other things, a frequent uh, movie, review, movie reviewer and a host at several of our conventions. We have K.G. Daniels, a sci-fi graphic novel writer. Uh, we have Nisha Mulshin from uh, Diversely Geek. And we have Toy Thomas, an author and blogger and the author of the Eternal Curse series online. And we have, of course, myself, G.W. Pometer, and Christian Basil online. So Yay. we're back, everybody. Uh, uh, James, we haven't heard a lot yes, from you. Um, uh, as a comic book creator yourself, um, how do you feel about uh, these shifts that we're talking about? Well, like I said, I think it's a wonderful thing because, like I said, um Everything in Hollywood is money driven and being that Black Panther has been breaking all these records, like I said, maybe more people more outside the geek realm will, you know, get involved or get uh try to learn more about these characters that we have out there. I mean, being independent is sort of hard because like I said, the major companies right now, D C Marvel, I mean, they have a real big head start on us. <laughs> yeah. So to speak. So yeah. so it's hard getting your, your work out there um to get it as popular as Black Panther is now. Um, you know, all we can do is keep plugging away and try to support each other's endeavors and hopefully it'll catch on. absolutely, absolutely. Um uh Toy, you had a point I think you were making just before we came back on the air. Um so shoot. Yeah, you had mentioned briefly something about um women. Uh, strong, you know, female characters in the in the movies, and yeah. um, I do think that that is getting better. I think it's always been something that Hollywood has been trying to do, but they've come up short a little bit. I think the idea of putting our superhero women in pants instead of skirts, you know, started it. You know, not and I'm not saying anything bad about Wonder Woman being in her skirt; she looks great. <laughs> But I'm just saying, there was one. There was once a time where you don't make fun of her, <laughs> you know. But um, I do think that that it's believe it or not, I feel like a lot of the shift in showing a proper strong female character started with the Hunger Games series because before then, all of these supposedly strong female characters were you know big chested, puffy lipped, um, you know, sweet talking like kick ass girls, but they weren't really strong. They just could fight well. And I feel like we're actually showing strong female characters now who yeah. are smart, and, and who have that shift, body uh, types. I, I think around the house, we were actually talking about this. Um, if you go back 20 years, you know, 30 years, uh, we introduced strong, we introduced Wonder Woman to television 30 years ago in a very campy way. But, mm-hmm. uh, our strong female characters back then were always accompanied by a strong male lead. Yeah. Almost always. And now, yeah. and now Gail, Gail got it delivered, man. She brought it for Wonder Woman. Um, arguably one of the, one of the best characters, uh, on film since Iron Man 2 has been Black Widow. She's really brought a lot to the whole team. She's been not only the heart, but a kick-ass woman. And of course, Mark and I can remember seeing Princess Leia on screen, on the big screen in the theater in 77 for the first time thinking she'll kick somebody's butt. Yeah. Yeah. So. I thought. So. I thought Sigourney Reaver was a really yeah. strong character during the Alien series. I know the first Alien movie, she was kind of doing this, the, um, you know, kind of played out trope, uh, mostly scared, running from the Alien at the end, kick the Alien's butt. But I thought she was superb in Aliens too, how she took over, didn't take a back stand, pretty much led a group of space Marines. So. Absolutely. Yeah, That's I mean, I, I think. I totally agree. I think Ripley, when I look back, you know, at my movie viewing history, I look at her as one of the strong female characters to look up to her and Sarah Connor and okay. Terminator Absolutely. 2, Absolutely. you know, but not all these so-called strong female characters were like those characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing more and more now. Uh, I was, we were actually commenting earlier that, uh, we recently binged through, uh, Jessica Jones on Netflix mm-hmm. and saw, Probably the one of the first and best examples of a woman not being shown in her best light, as you yep. pointed out. This is a very flawed character. This really harkens back to those 30s and 40s noir detectives that were always fellas. And now here's Jessica Jones in that role. She's she's bringing she's gender bent the noir detective into a superhero, and that's an amazing thing to see happen. And she's damaged goods, and she's taking it 
she's taking she's kicking butt. She's taking it to another level, I think. And, and then I think what, going back to what you said about um, aliens and aliens two, I think you needed aliens one to get the Ripley that we got in aliens two because I think she took a character, it, she developed that character. Yeah, for I me, agree. you you needed that aliens one to see because she had to be damaged goods. She had to go through that process and that uh, and that psychosis to be the woman who goes get away from her. You be so and without now, it, I don't. Yeah, and now and yeah, and now and now you know Sigourney Weaver. Uh, we recently saw her uh, come up on the Defenders, uh, returning to, to to returning to genre after you know breaking hearts and records across drama uh, and, and bringing a great bad guy to the screen. So that's fantastic, she's a, too. She's a penultimate bad guy, okay? You wanted to love her because, after all, she's Ripley, but she is so Bam. maniacal yeah. and so devious and just so duh. Yeah, so and you want to, and like, I think you hit it right on the head, Nisha, because you wanted to love her because she's Ripley, and you wanted right. to be like, I'm on her side, and then she's so evil, uh, that I don't know that I want to be on her side, even though I am sort of secretly. It, it's, it's, that's just powerful, wonderful acting. And, and when character, when, when actors and actresses get a chance to bring that kind of character to life, um, in an honest way that could cause these kinds of conversations, then they've done their job and they've done it well. They've earned whatever, six dollars, seven dollars. Uh, I don't even have a movie. Mark, where do you go to the movies, man? I don't even have a theater in this town that I can get into for six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's the uh, the Ultima on 18, and it's actually like five dollars and eighty something odd cents. But with tax, it comes to maybe six ten, six twenty, something like that. Uh, I, I'm cheap, man. I I, I made the salary, but I am really, really, really a frugal bastard. So cheap. We know your dad, Stan Lee. <laughs> you keep saying yeah, that. Uh, yeah. Well, no, he's he's uh he's not giving me any checks. So <laughs> not right. Dude. Stan's not writing the checks this week, so he's gonna six six dollars for a movie, dude. I'm, it's worth the drive for me to go to Altima. Yeah, yeah, oh, dude. I mean, uh, even my uh, Dolby. If I wanted to see something in my Dolby theater, which is the theater I preference. You know, I like I like to go to the most. It's, it's maybe I don't know seven dollars, eight dollars, or something like that. I think. Wow. But um, I'm serious. I'm cheap. I mean, it, uh, other than the Thursday night when you know Black Panther or Avengers or anything comes out on that Friday on the Thursday night, of course, I'm paying a lot more. If I'm seeing it again or, or going to see something that I don't necessarily need to see right away, it's always saying for the show, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, uh, we also um, – well, she's making me notes here. Uh, like, like, she does, like literally, Karen, like I she got a does, question for the you panel. guys watch us on camera? Sage is actually doing that to me now only we're on radio. She could just say it to me. I don't know. All right. So, well, Christian, by all means, ask your question. Yeah, I, I just had a question. And – I'm bringing a statement to Toy, just uh, just a concern, but, uh, not a concern, but I just wanted to bring uh, just an idea, idea because Toy, you said you were going in there not only to watch the movie but to support it. Right. I'm going to watch that movie because I watched a few reviews. I watched people talk about it and they loved it, so I'm going to go see it. We're going to have different perspectives about watching that movie. We're going to have hopefully both the same love for it when we both walk out of that theater. But I'm not. I'm not, not going to lower. Your reasoning and your rationality for going there, and I'm going there for a different reason. I think hopefully people, a lot of people, as it seems to be going for different reasons. Oh no, I totally agree that agree with that. I just meant that I know some people, me, you know, using myself as an example, make certain choices about the money they're going to invest to go see certain films. Right. Like, I wanted to support the movie. Um, oh my goodness, right. that, that yeah, monster guys, movie that came out. We got a lot of talking over here, real quick. Uh, Mark, go ahead, and then uh, and then we're gonna come back to you, James. And okay. Yeah. What I was gonna say, I, I'm I'm actually the opposite, Christian. I'm a little bit on your side. I did not go see Black Panther to support a black movie. That was not my intention in the beginning. It is Marvel. It is superhero. And yeah. believe me, I've been involved in enough African American, uh, 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 literally rallies, protests as an African American male from Baltimore, Maryland. Believe me, I'm 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 as close as as black as you can probably get. But <laughs> I did not go to see Black Panther to support a black movie. I went to see Black Panther because I thought it looked interesting. I wanted to see it. I'm a comic book fan. I'm a Marvel fan. And then maybe somewhere down the line, I'm going to support it if I thought, in fact, it was not going to hold its own. But for some reason, I knew this thing was going to rock. So, you know, they didn't need my money anyway. But (laughs) I respect everybody's reasons for supporting, you know, this movie. I do. 
Big, big, big Daddy is not mine. Big Daddy Disney doesn't need any of our money, but we're going to give it to him anyway. All right, uh, James, go ahead, man. It looks like you got something to say. Come on. Well, basically, I've been listening on everybody. Um, I supported it for all the above reasons um, because I am a uh, Marvel fan. I love Black Panther, the movie, because it had a lot of symbolism in it. Nobody's really talking about the symbolism that was in the film, but I'm not going to delve into it. Um, but I, seeing, I mean, everything about spoilers. Let, let some people pay to see that movie. No, well, <laughs> well, no, no, it's not really. It's not really spoilers. It's um, it's the philosophy. There's a philosophy in this movie. If you break it, if you break it down, so I'm not gonna le- um, go into it. I'll let you make up your mind when you go see it, and then maybe you could do another show. We could talk about it to see if everybody came up with the same synops- oh, synopsis. Oh, oh well, I'm looking forward to that one, Kevin. Kevin, I see you blinking over here. What do you got going, man? Um, no, I basically um, uh, <clears throat> agree. You know, I have a lot of reasons why I want to see Black Panther, and uh, having an all black cast was something very new for the most part, and I really haven't seen it much before. Uh, maybe Malcolm X when they came out, you know, a long time ago. So, uh, you know, I want to support it. I want to support it for a reason because I wanted them to produce a lot more movies like that and, you know, continue to diver- diversify in the comic book and science fiction world. I hope that kind of spreads out more. But, you know, at the same time, I enjoy good comic book and good science fiction movies. So, you know, the wrong, everybody had that interview to take why they want to go and see it and, um, I kind of like the same reason I saw Lord of the Rings. You know, before then, you didn't really see a bunch of fantasy movies that much. And I wanted to go and see it for the main reason. Cause I want to support this fantasy movie because I want to produce more of it. And I'm glad that it did well and they started to produce more of it. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with the different reasons, the re- you know, reason why people want to see it. And also, the movie had a lot of things to it, a lot of things. A lot, lot of things going um, on. Now, on the movie, I know, Mark, you do reviews all the time. Um, on the movie itself, guys, I, those that have seen it here, I know uh, Christian, Christian's a little behind us on this. He's waiting He's waiting for it to come to well, uh, network television. No. You were talking about <laughs> reviews, though. And here was my concern about this particular movie. And I this kind of scared me. And it actually brought a friend to actually call me up about this. I have friends who've seen the movie, and one of them just said that she was okay with it. She didn't think it was as big as the hype that they made. And of course, uh, Marvel's always going to hype. DC's always going to hype. All Everybody's going to hype the movies. But I've had a couple people who just either said that they were okay with it, or they just, oh, I, I, you know, it was okay, or didn't like it. Well, let's, let, let, let's dive uh, in. Hang, uh, hang, uh, hang on a second there. It, what happened is, is the rebuttals that they got, not only on Facebook or on Twitter, but they were called racist. And I'm like, wait a minute, hang on a second. They had legitimate statements so either they didn't like the movie it didn't it, it wasn't something that either spoke to them or they you know it's just like well it's another marvel it's, it's another marvel movie as one first it's like what's well, no different than didn't, uh America. just didn't resonate with them it just didn't resonate and well, that let's, let's, the, the as a movie what do you I mean, the rest of the panel who has seen the movie as a movie what did you all think of the movie just as a movie i know uh, it's a it's a film. No film is ever perfect. So, what it, Mark, you're you do reviews all the time. So, what did you see right and wrong with this movie? I do numbers, and everybody knows that eight point five. Eight point five, and that's it. That's all we're gonna get. Eight point five out of what? <laughs> you you sure ask show me, ever. <laughs> you ask me what I thought of it, and I rate my uh, you know yeah. my, my last numbers. Eight point five. Yeah. Okay, Toy. What did you think? Um, I mean, it was, I thought it was an excellent film. Um, it's, it's gonna, I don't, (laughs) I don't think my true opinion needs to be expressed right now because you're not going to like it, but it was a wonderful film. We're not going to, we're not going to like it. Of course we're going to like it. Why wouldn't we like it? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, James, what did you think? Sir, like I said, awesome movie. Um, you had comedy, you had action. Okay. You had romance. You had everything you needed. And a matter of fact, they should have did it this summer because this was a this would have been a great blockbuster summer movie. Okay, oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a good point. That is a good point. Hold on, yeah. hold on, yeah. guys. It's it's seven hundred million worldwide. I don't think uh, they needed the summer at all. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it's <laughs> it's rank, Mickey Mouse makes rank. his own sunshine. <laughs> I'm just saying it had that summer that summer that summer movie feel to it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. Kevin, Kevin, what do you think, man? Oh, I thought it was an awesome movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give it a number. I give it a 9.5. I think he's on the same level as a comic book movie, 
to me that was really impressionable is uh, Captain America with the Soldier and uh, the Dark Knight with uh, uh, Peter Bale. Joker. Christian Bale, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nisha, what did you think? How did you? How would you rate the, the overall experience? The year? So I, I'm, I mean, I go into a movie for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we do reviews as well, but we do them from the multidiversal, diverse uh, perspective. Uh huh. And um, so, as a movie, as an uh, experience of Sathora, where you're just um, completely saturated with this, you know, this this wonderful experience and environment, I rate it very high. Absolutely. Because I think wonderful. that Brian does an amazing job at being able to present us with, like I said. Multi um, sensory stimulation. stimulation. No, this was, yeah, so there, was we, there was a lot of a lot of things right with this movie. Now I heard a, a, a review uh, recently that I that I, I sort of agreed with a little bit as terms of general filmmaking, and that is, this is I, I kind of felt watching this movie. I kind of felt like Jeff Goldblum going through Jurassic Park, and I wanted to know, are you going to have a little bit of Black Panther in your Black Panther movie? Because they spent a lot of time developing the secondary and tertiary characters in a phenomenal way, but it seems like we we actually saw more of the personal development of uh, T'Challa and Black Panther uh, previously in Civil War. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was going to say um, that I, I, I told you I see it from multiple perspectives. So while I saw it that way and I thought it was amazing, we already discussed the multiple points that we felt were lacking in the film um, and then lacking in the storyline. So that's for a later point when everyone has seen it. But like what I said, there are things about it maybe you won't agree with my, my take on it. And um, part of it has to do with what you just said. Um, and why is it that they had such a huge run-up in the storyline? Now, I, I love the storyline. I love fleshing out character points and hoping that they're going to build it into something here. Hopefully, that's really good. Cool. So, Mark, you were, a, you were a full point lower than, than Kevin was in his review. Uh, well, will, you, will you share that point with us? What, was, what, was, what, what dropped the point for you? Yeah, but it was out of eight. Was that, yeah. <laughs> You know, in all honesty, because I'm, I'm anal and I'm, I'm very, very uh, passionate about how I grade movies, and 8.5 is in my very good range. Nines and tens are just excellent, and especially with 10 being over the top. So Black Panther was very good, and uh, I enjoyed it, but I have actually seen other movies that have knocked my socks off more so than this one. It doesn't, it's not any less love for the movie. I'm, I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy of it. Uh, it's fantastic, and for its first outing, it can only go up from here. You know, there's been some great, great sneak. Empire Strikes Back, guys. <laughs> amen, amen. All right, guys, we got about ten minutes left. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep on the discussion, but I just want to remind everybody we got about ten minutes uh, left on the show. So, Christian, uh, any any other fi- uh, questions that you have uh, for the panel? <laughs> he nods a lot. It's radio. You can't nod. I can't hear you when you nod. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think one of the concerns, like I said, I was, I was bringing up um, beforehand was that a lot of people had reviewed, uh, a few of my friends had reviewed it, and they didn't see it in the positive light. And when people started antagonizing them, and at one point, a couple of times, um, you said you're just being racist. I, I did not. I'm like, come on. They really had a point. They really had a discussion. And it, it is their choice whether or not to like the movie or like it. If they're just going to say that because there was a bunch of black cast, yeah, I'm not going to be on the same boat and I'm not going to tell them anything. But if they had a legitimate case or at one point the person who wrote was very simplistic about it just said, I just didn't like the movie. Yeah. Hey, Christian, if I can chime in for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sure. I, I've already dismissed uh, those people who got on your, your friend's case about being racist. I'm, I'm kind of tired of that kind of trolling kind of I'm, And I'm on that side, too. I'm just like, you know, that, they, sh- that should not be the way. They, they either liked it or they didn't like it. I'm going to tell you, the proof in the pudding for the movie is, in fact, uh, the repeat viewers, the people that are, in fact, going to see it a second and a third time again. That speaks for itself. So if someone did not like the movie, the movie is doing better without their support base. Yep. So the numbers current viewers are going back to it. But the racism crap, I, I don't buy that at all. If yeah, well, not, I, it, it does bring I'm up agree. a... It does bring up an important question for the rest of the panel, and that is when a, when a movie, when a piece of entertainment, something we all love and is very dear to us, uh, is, is being looked at, and there is a, a socially charged uh, portion or, or element to it, can we have an honest discussion about it? Is, it, is that – do we live in – can we – 
is it possible for viewers and fans to have that honest discussion when there's a socially charged issue in one of our in one of our properties? Toy, what do you think? I, I was I was I would say yes and no. I would say yes if you're with a group of like minded people and no if you're not. I mean I think it's ridiculous that people automatically assume that someone is racist if they didn't like the movie. But you have to raise the question of, you know, why? If they have a legitimate reason for not liking it, they just didn't like it. But sometimes people don't like things for other reasons. And you have to discuss, you know, how to talk with someone to figure that out. You can't just label someone something because they don't automatically agree with you. So I think it depends on the audience. If it's people who are willing to sit down and discuss, then, yeah, you should be able to talk about it. But if you know you're coming to the table with someone who already has maybe a bias, Oh it, you're not gonna get a you know an honest answer. Yeah, right. Gary, she hit it right on the nail, man. She, I mean, she hit the nail right on the head on that. When I agree yeah. wholeheartedly, um, yeah, a- now- I, I, as do I, guys. Uh, Nisha, what do you think? You 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 have a, an entire uh, community built uh, based on the diversity in in the geekdom. What do you think? Is it you know do, do the people in your group can they have an honest discussion when there's an issue like this inside of a film or a comic or, or a series? So we have a very a large uh, global social media site, which is um, extremely well placed, and we don't allow a lot of. Uh, okay, so let me just leave back. We can everyone can say what they have to say. There is no, um, you know, censoring unless it's a negative language. So we take away negative language if there's anything that's um, blatantly racist or otherwise that does come down. But everyone has a has a right to state their opinion, and we don't fight. Like, we don't. Um, push any agendas because that's not what we're about. We're about equal and free opportunities, but we're also about um, equality and fair-mindedness and acceptance. <laughs> so it's a very interesting, you know, for us to to traverse. I'm just letting you know because we're like no, no balancing balancing <laughs> a conversation with a really charged social. Uh, element to a pop a pop culture story is a really difficult right. thing to do, and you guys do a fantastic job with that. Uh, I know KG Daniels, you do a lot of work on the, on the radio up in St. Louis with Something Unique Magazine. Um, is an honest conversation, open conversation, is that something that that you've experienced as a is a possibility, or is there is it too charged for some people? Kevin, um, it's it's a possibility. I mean, as long as everybody being honest about their criticism of the movie and I mean, you have to start just being honest about it. You don't like particular movie and you explain why you don't like it. That's fine. I, you know, I've seen trolls online come from different angles. I mean, yeah, I, I think I might see somebody made a reference to it was somebody uh, non-black or white made a criticism about Black Panther, and they don't like their criticism. I mean, I, I think I might see one person use that word being them, them being racist, which is stupid. Um, I see other people making racist memes about Chakala eating watermelon. <laughs> just to get a rise out of people. So you had that type God. of element too. No, I have seen that week yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's no shortage of stupid in the no. world. That's for sure. James, you can't have debate. You can't have debate. Well, I'm gonna say this before. You can't have debate against somebody who's automatically trolling. No, so my that's thing is, true. as long as people is being autumn being honest about their criticism, I think you have a logical um, description. You know, uh, they can get a logical reason rationale behind it. This shouldn't be a problem. But all right, I mean, well, James, not- James, you're the last one to weigh in on this honest conversation. Uh, what an issue like this is at play, be it in the art itself or by reviewers and people like us out here on the radio or wherever. Is, is an honest conversation something that is, is that you're open to and the people around you, or is it something that you find people have shut you down? Well, being that I'm part of our military, most of uh, um, the people that I serve with are sort of open-minded because, you know, you don't have any choice, but they'd be like-minded because you got a mission to achieve, basically, uh-huh. no matter no matter what color you are. Um and I guess in my social life, it's the same. I mean, if I feel that you are on that end of the spectrum, I don't think I need to be dealing with you anyway because <laughs> you look, cause you look closed minded. I don't deal with closed minded people. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I think you can have an honest conversation as long as everybody's been honest. I do too. I think, yeah. that, and that's, you know, we all, when I uh, sent the invitation for the show uh, tonight, uh, you know, we chose a, a great panel. We're so happy to have you all here uh, on the show. Uh, and the reason we chose you all was because we've already had open, honest conversations about topics uh, with you. And we knew 
that this is the one play we want to make sure we're hanging with you guys we want to make sure that we're having an honest dialogue when a movie's great it's great by the way black panther was a fantastic movie uh i don't know if i'm at the 8.5 but maybe uh 7.5 or 8 again the only thing i thought was missing was i would have liked to see just a little more black panther in my black panther movie uh, but but you know I did I thought it was a great great film and this was a great topic tonight guys we're down to about two minutes so uh, we want to kind of go around and get some last words on the topic again our topic tonight has been diversity in film and television how it's building how we're doing what we can do better uh, we've had a great great panel uh, talking about this issue with us we've, we've strayed all over the place we talked about uh, ethnic and racial diversity we've talked about gender diversity um but I'm going to go around the room real quick, um, except for Christian, who can give us a favorite moment from what? another film. But from this film, without giving too much of a spoiler, guys, your favorite moment in this film, the favorite moment. We're going to go around. we got about uh, two minutes. Go ahead. Uh, let's start with Mark. Oh, crap. Move on. Go <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, moving on. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to start with uh, Nisha. Nisha, what do you say? Favorite moment? Well, that's... <laughs> I'm asking you to pick one that's, moment that's in two hours. Fair. That's hard, huh? That is so not fair. And if I did that and somebody hasn't seen the movie, Christian, close your ears. Christian, you, you don't listen to this. <laughs> I don't listen to anything. I have two really big points. Um, one is at the beginning and one's at the end. For me, it's all the way at the end when he and um, Killmonger uh, have their last moment together. Uh huh. Mm. And there's a lot of reasons for why I, I really feel that moment. And that's all I'm going to say because I think you guys know what that, that moment is. Well, we could and, hey, Garrett, I, I got it now. Okay. And go, right. No, no. Without, you, without you're running, if she spoiler, tells you, you're running the movie. Without, yeah, <laughs> without giving too much I'm not telling you any more than that. That's right. And, and Nisha's and way, at, it just, way at the beginning when he shows. That's Ooh. the moment. Those <laughs> moments are moments that give you, uh, I think the vernacular of the internet today of the young kids is it gives you the feels. Yep. I think that's the vernacular. Mark, go ahead. What's your, what do you got? And, and, and this is a spoiler, non-spoiler for Christian because he won't know what the hell I'm talking about. But this was, <laughs> it happens to be I don't time, care about yeah. spoilers. I'm okay. one, one of my One of my top spoiler moments, and here we go. What are those? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, we agree. Oh, my God. Okay. And non-spoiler look out. Non-spoiler <laughs> moment. Okay. James, favorite moment. Yes, sir. James, favorite moment? I have two, I, I have two but um, one was already covered is at the ending because what he, okay. Killamonger, told uh, T'Challa was very, very deep, and I really felt that. Yep. Uh, um, the second is like, I don't think this would be a spoiler, but after Killamonger takes the heart-shaped herb, him and his father are in the, um, I guess, the astral plane, mm. and he t- him and his father are having a conversation. His father said, look like, they forgot about us, and we're just in this apartment. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I thought yeah. that was very deep. It does. It gets. It, they do. They, the deep moments, the ones that really get to you inside, are really big. Uh, Toy, what did you think? Favorite moment? Well, it's already been said, but you know, Killmonger's last words really stuck with me. Um, I thought the one scene that stuck in my head—it's not my favorite moment, but I can't get it out of my head is um the fire when he set fire to the I'm not gonna say but yeah that was yeah, yeah. that was wow. that was heartbreaking because I felt like yeah. he went beyond just trying to get his he was hurting other people like that wasn't his to do that to and but, but it was just stuck with me. And you're like that's what he was trained to do. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it really is. Uh K G, what what was your favorite moment? Uh man, everybody's saying the 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 end of the scene with um Killmonger and uh Black Chakala and um one of the one the other scenes with both of them meeting their fathers in the astral world, they just kinda of thought about me and my dad because my dad's no longer with us. And that was a special scene. Oh, it, uh, that, that's when you know that a film is, is being successful is when it reaches in and it touches something inside your core and it speaks yeah. to you. Um, guys, we got to wrap it up here, man. Thank you guys so much for being on the air with us tonight. This was our inaugural Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. Uh, yeah. Christian, final thoughts? Uh, I just want to let you know, and uh, I was going to ask everybody, try to convince me to watch Black Panther, but I'll tell you this conviction. The, the reason why I'm watching Black Panther in the theaters is because yeah. I saw Chadwick Boseman play Black Panther 
in Civil War, and he kicked butt. And I was like, God, I got to know more about this character because Chadwick did an incredible job that in Civil did. War with that character that it was enough to say, I'm going to see this movie in theaters because I want to see how far this, this can take it. So I don't need convincing. That's You're the reason so why I'm young. seeing this movie. You are so damn young. What? <laughs> what? All right, folks. What? We have had an outstanding Hanging with Web Show radio hour. Uh, thank you so much to James <laughs> Bethel, Mark B. Lee, Kevin G., Daniels, Disha, Mulchin, Toy, Thomas. Thank you guys so much for being on the air with us. Uh, I'm G.W. Pomacher. And I'm Christian I'm Basil. Here, and, and I'm here with Christian Basil. And we are hanging with radio show, uh, uh, hanging with web show radio hour. And we'll be back next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific. So remember, everybody, tune in, log on, and see who we're hanging with next. <laughs> I'm not the best of 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 the best of